morning and welcome to the Universalist Unitarian Church of Peoria. You are welcome, whoever you are, wherever you are on our journey, and we are excited to have you here this morning because we have a wonderful speaker. Today you will hear from Shama St. Louis, who is a grassroots organizer right here in Peoria. She has done work with the Peoria People's Project, where they fight for racial and economic justice. She has worked with the Black Justice Project and uses her voice to raise awareness and fight for racial equity. And she's probably a familiar face to quite a few you use here. <laughs> she has been speaking for this one for many years in many different avenues. We see her at the Women's March. We have seen her at many of the Black Lives Matter rallies and many other places calling out for justice. So we are excited to have Shama here with us this morning. And now for your opening words. Welcome, you who come in need of healing, who are confused or who have been betrayed. Welcome with your problems and your pain. Welcome to your joys and your wonderings. Welcome your need for hope, for longing, for assurance, instead of answers. Here, you have a safe place for your questions. Instead of promises, you may find community for your struggles, people with hands and hearts to join you in engaging in the challenges and changes of our day. We are Unitarian Universalists. This is the Church of the Open Mind. This is the Church of the Loving Heart. This is the Church of the Helping Hands. This is our Church. Good morning. It's good to be with you. As I look through this lens, I can see that you are a strong and powerful looking group. You know, with all of our power, we have the ability to stand up and help others, especially if we all work together. That's harder than it looks sometimes though. So I thought I would share with you a short classic story that tells a little bit about working together. It is called The Bundle of Sticks. Once upon a time, during a time of much pain and conflict, life was sad and hard for everyone. One family of five made life even more difficult by fighting among themselves all the time. One day, their father got tired of the fighting and he spoke to them and asked why they acted this way when people all around them in the world were deeply hurting and in pain. Why couldn't they just get along? But his words didn't seem to have any effect on them. So after thinking for a while, he asked his oldest son to collect a bundle of sticks. The oldest son did as he was asked and brought the bundle to his father. And his father commanded him to break the bundle of sticks. Now the son, though strong, couldn't break the bundle. The second child tried and failed, as did the third and the fourth. When it was her turn, the fifth child untied the bundle and pulled out a single stick. She said, Father, I know why you ask us to break this bundle. When we fight among ourselves, we are like this single stick and break easily. But when we stick together, we are strong and impossible to break. The father was happy to finally have his words understood. And from that point on, the family stood strongly together to face the troubles in the world and work together to make a difference. We can learn a lot from this simple family as we face the troubles in the world and work to make a difference. May we always remember to put aside our own differences, focus on the changes we want to see, and stand together to face them. So be it. Good morning. My name is Shar Ricky. As a representative from our caring committee, I'm here to share the joys and sorrows of our friends and members with you. We send our deepest sympathy to Dawn and T.J. Stone as they mourn the tragic loss of their dear friend, Jill Chennault, on June 22nd. 
And our deepest sympathy is also extended to Sherry and Andy Scholl as they mourn the passing of Andy's mother, Betty Scholl, aged 94, from Worcester, Ohio, on Ju July 12th. We send our congratulations to Martha and Bill DeBold as they celebrate the birth of granddaughter Skylin, born on July 11th, to parents Stein and Luke DeBold. Please hold these joys and sorrows in your hearts during the week ahead, and remember our community is filled with joys made brighter and sorrows made lighter by sharing them. If you have a joy or a sorrow you would like to share with us, please send a note to Caring at caring at peoriauuchurch.org, call me at the number in the directory, or join us on Zoom Wednesday nights at 7. We shall be known by the company we keep, by the ones who circle round to tend these bags. We shall be known by the ones who sow and reap the seeds of change alive from deep within the earth. In order to strengthen our communities, we need a solid strategy to empower the residents suffering under the hands of oppression. This strategy cannot be solid or successful without the willingness of you and I to carry out the work of winning our communities back. There's a real need to be intentional about protecting the lives and the needs of our most vulnerable residents. There's also a real need to be intentional about centering our work to do so around building racial equity. This system has failed our people in so many ways, from creating food deserts in our communities to depriving us of economic sustainability. What is happening in our city and in cities around the country is cause and effect. We must educate, we must strategize, we must mobilize, and we have to organize for change. 
Some falsely believe that if we support our most struggling neighborhoods, then our other neighborhoods must somehow lose. But I want us to dispel that notion because caring for your sister is sick, who is sick does not mean your brother who is well must suffer. And spending time with your son who is behind at school does not mean your daughter who is doing well in school would suffer. Your brother's health means that he can care for his sister too. And your daughter's luck at school means that she now has the opportunity to care for your son. Likewise, taking action to invest in our most disadvantaged neighborhoods does not mean our most well-off neighborhoods will be neglected or that they will suffer. And this is not a question of rich neighborhoods versus poor neighborhoods. It's really a question of Peoria versus poverty. Dr. King wrote in his letter from Birmingham jail, moreover, I am cognizant of the interrelatedness of all communities and states, and I cannot sit idly by in Atlanta and not be concerned about what happens in Birmingham. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects us all indirectly. We are one family, and as we care for each member, our entire family is better off. We cannot continue to operate under the pretense that in order for some of our communities to win, others must lose. We have to challenge how we view growth and success in Peoria. With the proper resources and the right people, we can make major changes in our community. We're already proving that we are ready to move beyond transactional interactions to interactions that are more transformational. And we're already proving that we care about each other. In the wake of this pandemic and recent racial uprisings, we have stepped up and we have shown up for each other in more ways than one. We have donated to mutual aid services, we have donated to bailout services, and we have stood beside each other, regardless of race, as brothers and sisters, setting aside our differences to fight against the injustices that threaten black lives and working families. We are also proving that we, when we invest in each other, whether that be financially or through time and energy, positive changes can and they will happen. We must continue on this path until the power is back in the hands of the people. We must bring humanity back into our work. People should have the ability to shape their own lives. We are in an unprecedented time but right now is the time to seize the moment. As a community, we must understand the value of seizing the moment. We must take this time to use our radical imaginations and imagine what could a perfect Peoria look like? Change does not happen without a dream of what could be. We must condition ourselves to look at our communities, not as they are, but as they should be and as they could be. Everything that exists in this world today was conceived by someone who at that time was believed to have a radical imagination. Everything that exists in this world today was conceived by someone. Without their willingness to dream or think big, to think outside of the box, the simple things that we enjoy every day, like flicking on the light, hopping on the plane, getting in our cars, calling on a cell phone, would not exist. Think about this the next time that someone tells you our ideas to unify our community is too big. As a community, we should reflect on this every time someone tells us what Peorians aren't ready for. I want to encourage each and every one of you to own your power and to be clear about your purpose. We have over 100,000 people in our community that we can observe, 
listen to, and learn from. We have to be willing and unafraid to make the impossible possible. That is our job as leaders, and that is our job as residents who make up our communities. Each one of you listening to the sound of my voice today is a leader. And if we are unwilling to take the time and the energy to co-create what our community should look like, then we are failing each other. The pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The leader adjusts the sails. We must move beyond complaining about what isn't right in our community. And when we must move beyond expecting anyone else but ourselves to fix it. We must step in as leaders and make the changes we seek. I'm a full-time community organizer. My job is to engage and empower people with the purpose of increasing the influence of groups historically underrepresented in policies and decision-making that affect their lives. Imagine if we had hundreds of people in our city working to engage and empower people. Imagine if we were all pushing for better policies to our communities, for our communities. Where would we be? It's not too late to roll up our sleeves. It's not too late to get involved. As long as you have breath in your body, you can become change. Peoria has been rated the worst city in the nation for black Americans to live. We have extremely high rates of poverty and we have extremely high rates of unemployment. The average black person in Peoria lives at or below the poverty level. We should all be outraged by these statistics. We should resist every idea or suggestion that does not speak to improving this issue. In doing so, we must also remember that love is at the root of our resistance and co-creating our communities is at the heart of our work. I'd like to read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 14 through 16. And here it talks about one body with many members. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all, all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Indeed, the body does not consist of one member, but of many. If the foot would say, because I am not the hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear would say, because I am not the eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? And if the whole body were hearing, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many members, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need for you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need for you. On the contrary, the members of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. In those members of the body that we think less honorable, we clothe with greater honor, and our less respectable members are treated with greater respect. Whereas our more respectable members do not need this, but God has so arranged the body, giving the greater honor to the inferior member, that there may be no dissension within the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together with it. And if one member is honored, all rejoice together with it. I'd like to thank the UU Church for inviting me to speak to you all today. It is a pleasure to stand before you as your sister uh, in the fight for everything that is right. 
and as your sister in the fight for justice for all of our communities. I want to remind you that you are a leader, that you have power, that you are um, um, needed and necessary in our community. And there is nothing that, uh, no type of changes that you seek that cannot start with you. I want to encourage us to have empathy for each other, to show love to each other, and to reach out to other communities and see how you can be of service. We are only as strong as our weakest link. We have to empower each other in order for us all to win. And there is room at the table for all of us. I want to dispel any idea that in order for some of us to win, others must lose. If you have food and I am hungry, you can share with me and we can both eat. That's how we have to view each other in our community. How can we share in success? How can we share in happiness? How can we help each other and how can we love each other more? Giving you all the love, all the peace and all the blessings. Thank you. Today's closing words come from Sarah Eileen Lawal, seeking that which unites us. Spirit of life and love in this time of uncertainty, of fear and angst, our nation holds its collective breath. In this time when rhetoric blusters about and words are used as weapons, our nation clenches its fists, tightens its shoulders, eyes squeezed shut. Some are preparing for a fight. May we remember we are a people of resilience. We have faced uncertainty before. We have weathered storms. We have been consumed by flames. We have risen like the phoenix from the ashes. We will again, we the people. May we remember our shared humanity, our universal kinship, our interdependence as we unclench our fists and breathe together, breathing in love and breathing out peace. May we recognize the spark of the divine inside all of us, even those we are not quite sure about. In this time of uncertainty, we remember the good will go on as we work to move forward together we the people, seeking out that which unites us, with our arms reaching out wide, for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. May love prevail.